Well, good morning, Saturday morning. I guess it is September the 18th, if I'm not mistaken. I better say that before I go. Uh, glad to have everyone on this morning. Our Saturday mornings, have, we look, Todd and I were talking earlier, we we're talking about how much we always look forward to Saturday mornings, but I believe this Saturday morning is always special because uh, we have a founder and one of our favorite people that I actually met. Most people may not know this, but I met when I joined this company. Uh, I, uh, Jeff was one of the, was the first person, one of the first day, the first day when I met. Uh, and decided to join RX. Um, that's been almost nine years. We're coming up on nine years. So it was over, over eight and a half years. And I'll say this, and I've said it to him then, I was so impressed with him. Not because He was not one of those hot kind of guys. He was always that guy that just, he, you know, he is like an accountant. He's one of those bean counters, I call it, that, that uh, you know, when he talks, he's, you know, he speaks about facts and numbers. And but I was just so impressed with him that day that it made such a difference. And uh, when I joined the company and eight and a half years later, I can still say that everything he says, I, I listen closely to because uh, Jeff speaks with facts. He doesn't, he doesn't hop things. That's just not his personality. And, and my goodness, the, the lineup of people we have here, I mean, the leadership from around the country, I'm so excited. I'm not going to start the names, but I mean, there is so many people on, but Jeff, uh, We've, we've given you a list of questions, but I mean, you were the chief financial officer of RX. And I mean, you're also a chief financial officer of another publicly traded company before that. I don't know how many. I know you're uh, an auditor with Price Waterhouse. I mean, I know there's a lot of things. Why don't you give us a, before we start giving you crazy questions and, and we're going to open it up to some of these other leaders, why don't you give us kind of your, I'm going to give you two minute resume here. You tell us about yourself because I can read all the things you say. I don't tell me all that good stuff. T tell me about your background just a little bit. You're muted. Yep. There you go. Am I, am I in? You're in now. Let's roll. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Chris. I appreciate your comments. I, <clears throat> I remember that day very, very well. It was a, it was a most intense and uh, rewarding day. I met a whole room full of extraordinary people, and I'm pleased to to look back and reflect on. <clears throat> the journey we've traveled together and consider all of you, every single person in that room, a really dear friend. Um, we've, we've connected in ways way beyond our, our, uh, our work relationship, uh, having traveled around and, and been to events and homes and, and, uh, and struggled through life's challenges together and super, super grateful to be on the call with you, your team and everybody else. From from Salt Lake to Dubai, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. Um, my background, um, first and probably foremost, I'm a dad, and I've uh, been married for 36 years, almost 37. And um, uh, I uh, I started my career really actually as an entrepreneur. Uh, opened up a sporting goods store in the local area and uh, went back to school and got my master's degree in accounting and was an auditor with Price Waterhouse for several years. Uh, went to be in financial management at uh, a company called Franklin Covey. Some of you may still be carrying around planners. I don't know. <laughs> if not, you should be. <laughs> but um, it's because they're way better than trying to plan your life on a phone. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> but uh, from there went to, um, to work for uh, a national bookstore and, uh, and publishing company, and then became the CFO at USANA Health Sciences. And uh, from there left to start Rx. And so, have been in finance management as a CFO in all of those companies from the get-go. Um, been doing it for, gosh, 30, 38 years. <laughs> so anyway, um, that uh, that's what brings me to my point of view. I should have said you were the founding partners. I didn't just say you chief financial officer, but you're also a founding owner in RX. I should have thrown yep. that in. I didn't say that. I thought most people probably knew that. So I just took that for an assumption that they were aware that you were not just a CFO. You were also an owner there as yep. well. 
So we're going to kind of turn this time. Why don't you, why don't you start with you and, and then, and we'll kind of go down and some of these people, we're going to have some questions as we got so many leaders on, we, we just, we're going to kind of hit him with questions. He already knows he's kind of prepared for all these crazy questions he might get this morning. So shoot for from him. So Todd, you want to start next? Yeah, you know, it was awesome because all of these different leaders sent questions and they really, when I got to studying all the questions and Senator Jeff, I realized that everybody out of 20 questions, we really all asked the same three or four things. So coming straight from Tracy Turnberg, um, can you give us kind of the state of new age and where you see us headed? Kind of give us the big picture. Yep, yep, not a problem. Let me let me attack the uh, the most lingering and begging question first. <laughs> that is, what's up with systems? <laughs> I, uh, it's not a laughing matter, but um, I like to address the what the pink elephant in the room, and so let's do it. Um, uh, as as you know, um, merges are hard, and. And we have been challenged with our systems integrating very complex and extensive infrastructure and services. It is not easy. <clears throat> now, not an excuse. And uh, we recognize and understand that it's been very difficult for you, uh, challenging in almost every way, interfacing with the company, being able to support and, and facilitate your team and your business. I, I do know this, having talked to Mark Wilson, our president, about it numerous times, that uh, we feel highly optimistic about the return to full services and capabilities, and in fact, enhanced capabilities over the next couple of weeks. There is uh, an improvement literally every day, every day. In fact, I was talking to Ian on a call with um, China, <clears throat> Uh, three days ago and asked him how he felt about the services within China, <coughs> excuse me, which are even more complicated because of the, the uh, interface with Chinese um, internet and other uh, challenges in that, in that uh, arena. And he said, every single day, things become much better. And so the progress and the improvements I, uh, I'm very happy about. Uh, it's been a frustrating process for us as well. And for me, mainly because I'm, I'm the guy at New Age that provides cool stuff. That's my job. My job is to make people walk away from their computer going, dang, this place is awesome, <laughs> right? Now, clearly way beyond the compensation and the products that are just extraordinary, and uh, the opportunity, but to, to be able to get discounts on travel and bling and jewelry and, and to be able to use your new age benefit uh, reward dollars to buy stuff that you don't even have to use your own cash and to be able to save and, and manage your money within the network is, I mean, all of that stuff is, is the, the benefit of being a part of this organization and those have been challenged over the last month. And so, um, you know, for me, being able to be the, the guy that gives cool stuff and have my hands tied behind my back has been really frustrating. But uh, tra the travel side is now up. Go book your travel and save money. And, and the rewards are coming back online. And you know, somebody just said that, oh, Sean, <laughs> the bling is available, in fact, let me tell you just really quickly, the guys that, that we engage to do our uh, diamond program literally have changed the face and experience of diamonds across the entire world. It's a program that is just, it, it's unheard of. And, and so take advantage of it, get some fun stuff for your teams and, uh, and they'll save you anywhere from like 30 to 80%, depending on what it is that you're getting. But the point is, is I'm just trying to, to create an environment that, that, you can, that you can only get here, which means it becomes a great recruiting tool for you, and it helps retain people because it's not possible to get all these things anywhere else, but that it, uh, that it creates a great experience. And so um, if, you're, if you're wearing cool stuff or you're going on a cool trip or whatever, uh, send me pictures because it just means that this is working for you. So I'm very, 
Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. All of that is now coming back online. And so I am, I am comfortable that, that we're going to be not only as good as we were, but better. Now, as an introduction into where is new age and where is it going? Um, I think that that is the right word for it. Uh, not only as good as we've always been, but better. Now, keep in mind one really important principle, and that is um, a painstaking decision to merge companies had as its core intention to create a much grander opportunity for its representatives. That was the only objective for us. We had launched a company 10 years ago. We were fortunate nine years ago, almost, to have Todd Rowland and this entire team and a room full of extraordinary people make a very difficult decision to create a better life, a better opportunity, and to do so for themselves and everybody they, they knew and who they would meet. We preceded them only by a year. We wanted to create a better opportunity for everyone that we could possibly meet and that they would love what they did in Oryx. That's what we started it for. We had great jobs. We had a functioning company. It just didn't achieve what we wanted it to achieve. So we went and started our own and did it differently. And having achieved largely what we had set out to do, we concluded that in order to be able to reach vastly more people, in many more countries and provide the capital to do so, the resources to engage more quickly, we made a difficult decision to join another company in order to do that. Uh, New Age gave us that platform. Merging companies is difficult. And, and so it's been, it's been tough. But that said, all that we've been seeking to accomplish initially and now is underway. And so optimistically, uh, we are now stepping into the realm of, okay, this is why we did this. This is why we concluded that this was the best thing for people because we're now getting to that point. Took longer than we thought. We knew it would take, I don't know, six to eight months, but we're almost a year in. And so we're we're getting there. And, and so you'll see in the very near future, um, I, I can't tell you, otherwise I'd have this horrible, horrible experience. <laughs> <if I did. laughs> but you'll, you, we'll get past that. The, you'll see an entirely new level of commitment from New Age to each of you an entirely new level of opportunity, an entirely new level of, of benefits and of means to accomplish even greater success in your teams. That is what New Age is committed to and committing to. You'll hear more about it from Brent. You'll hear much more about it from Mark. Um, Mark is very bullish and he's excited. Um, I, I will put in a plug for two seconds. Um, I've known Mark for thir 13, almost 14 years. Um, and uh, and I, I have been through every valley, <laughs> over every mountain, every challenge that you possibly can in a, in a career. And um, I told Mark uh, a couple of days ago, there is no one on this planet better equipped to lead this network marketing organization into our future. He is amazing, incredibly difficult challenges for a person in his position. He is phenomenal, most of which you guys don't see. 
but as a human being and as a leader in a time when we're um, overcoming some significant merge challenge, uh, he is remarkable. Um, I see what he does that nobody else sees. And, uh, and I wanted to share that with you because I, I just feel so strongly after talking to him about his navigation on, on this thing. And we have the right guy at the helm in that thing. So uh, very proud of what he's accomplished and very, very proud to have been his partner uh, for a very, very long time. And I look forward to that in the future myself in a great way. But in any case, um, uh, I, I, there was another question that came through that's related to this, Todd. Um, that is, what, what would be the one thing that the representatives would need to know or take from today? And, and that is this. Um, you should expect and you should start experiencing extraordinary service, professionalism, opportunities, and benefits from this company. And I believe that if strategies that Brent has shared with you already begin to play out quickly, uh, we will become the network marketing choice in all the world, literally. Now, I'm not blowing funny stuff at you to make you feel good. We literally have a plan and a strategy to, to be the only appropriate, meaningful, qualified network marketing choice on the planet. Uh, because of not only what we will offer and, and how we will do it, but because it will have the most momentum. I believe that. And, and I believe that we are uh, out of the valley and starting the ascent to become that powerhouse in the world. And the beauty is, instead of 18 markets that Rx was in, New Age has over 70, and we have the ability to literally ripple through the planet. That increases your potential. And some of you may be thinking, ah, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to own my town in North Carolina, right? Um, you can. You will if you work and you will have team members from, from your town to Dubai. <laughs> what wow. time is it in Dubai? Oh, gosh. Show up more Saturdays. We have, you know, we have people from all over. You never know what's going to show up on this Saturday morning. You know, one thing about it, Jeff, there's, so two awesome. people, there's a lot of people on here from that eight and a half years ago when we were there. Yeah. Oh my were, gosh, uh, it's so Eric, awesome. I, I mean, fact. I keep seeing names pop up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're on this thing. It's so good to see you. Anyway, so let me just wrap this, this comment up, uh, Todd, with this. Um, we, we are on an aggressive ascent and it, uh, it is going to be paying off in a really important way. Um, I will tell you this, having started and run Oryx, over the last 10 years from zero to almost 250 million, <clears throat> um, that path was riddled with challenge. Uh, it was very, very difficult. Um, I've got bags under my eyes. I've lost most of my hair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm old and, uh, and I think I aged a little bit more than the 10 years that we did this. <laughs> But um, I cannot tell you how gratifying it is in my heart to not only have traveled that path with you and my partners, but to have traveled that path relying on the grace of heaven and the unending labor and effort every single day that we created something extraordinary. And if there is no other legacy and I go to the dust tomorrow, I will be proud that one, I know you, and two, that we did what we did, and three, that we have now set this thing on a path to go way, way, way beyond what we could have done in, in, uh, in Arch by itself. So I, um, I think we've got a, 
an incredible opportunity that lies before us, uh, even bigger than than what I thought we had when we sat in a room with five guys going, how do we change the world? <laughs> so here we are talking to people on all four quarters of the planet. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, Jeff, we have a lot of leaders here, so I'm going to let some of them ask some questions. And you know, Aaron texts me and said he had good questions, so I'm going to, I'm going to go to Aaron first and, and get let him chime in because he was there that first day. I mean, we we, we he was eight and a half years ago. Aaron was there sitting in the same table I was, I believe. So, Aaron. Yep. Jeff, so good to see you. Uh, Great to see you, Aaron. First of all, Jeff, thank you so much for your vision, your friendship. But before we go, because I think it's really applicable to what where you just ended. Almost nine years ago, you were sitting in my living room on, on the, just in front of the fireplace with a, with a very small group of people. I know I Jane Bowling, there, several were there. And, and Jeff, I think it's so important right now for people to understand what you walked away from the first time. Mm. What you gave up, what you invested, what you sacrificed, that story that you shared at the fireplace I believe that's the story that people need to hear right now, because what happened from there is then Oryx then hit that point. And I believe this is just another fireside story to go to the next level. Uh, well, um, <laughs> uh, so so we we have always felt uh, as a management team that our representatives are really the only important thing in the business model. In the relationship that we have with them, one, all things can be accomplished, um, but really we can achieve uh, extraordinary opportunities and provide great lives for people and, and really enable people to provide great lives for themselves. Um, it's remarkable to think about what is in the human will to find happiness and succeed and to, to enjoy their life. Um, enabling that is, is, has been an honorable quest. We didn't feel like we could achieve that where we were uh, for a whole variety of reasons. And, and so we, we set out to create our own and, um, and, and create the opportunity that we sought to do while we were at USANA. But um, uh, unfortunately, it was, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a tough um, start. <laughs> we, uh, we left with no intention of having anybody follow us because because we didn't want to cause any grief for anybody or them, you know, let alone all the people that we'd helped build businesses over, uh, gosh, I think Mark had been there 15 years and Fred maybe a year less and, um, and Riley about the same. And uh, we left, uh, we gave up great jobs, <laughs> uh, a lot of money. And uh, we, we actually were at a time when the, the bonuses and, and stock options and, and other things had been, had been set in place to be rewarded to everybody. And, and uh, we walked away from a $12 million share issue. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still wondering what we were thinking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, dang. Um, but that, but the, the numbers are irrelevant. Um, we, we decided not to, not to, to walk away from that, we decided to not accept it. Um, it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different perspective. And the reason we didn't is we didn't feel like we could go to the planet with, with our idea and our hope um, having taken the money and run. Um, so we left knowing that we were going to have to figure out how to make it work because <laughs> we felt like that would bring integrity to, to our, to our objective. And uh, I think Fred went five years without a paycheck. I went three. Um, the others went about that same amount and it was tough. Um, 
uh, spent every dime of my children's college fund and all of our savings and, and everything else we had. And, and right about the time it was running out, <laughs> um, we were, you know, we were hitting our numbers and, and we cash flowed in, in 13 months, we hit profitability at that point and, and, uh, we've never looked back. Um, and, uh, a lot of people, um, who were, were angry at us, uh, vilified us. <laughs> Ooh, baby, <laughs> you look, you look at the, the, the search engine information prior to 2011 and, and, uh, we were rock stars and heroes. And after the first of 2011, we were the worst human beings that <laughs> ever existed <laughs> if you listen to the social media back then but um uh it has then ended up proving not to be true and and uh most of all of those lies have now been have been proven to be to be uh nothing more than lies and uh you know i guess people were frustrated that we that we just couldn't put up with that stuff anymore and so we were on our way but um but uh, you know i don't think about it. i know the other guys don't think about it so much um because you know we we just didn't ever look back and uh and we we have done nothing but look forward and met great people and and created some extraordinary platforms and opportunities and and ways of doing network marketing and so we're um we're now where we are um and the interesting thing about today is uh we we feel like we've climbed a really incredible, extraordinary mountain. Sitting on top of that mountain right now, um, pre-merge, uh, was a was a really interesting view. And and we discovered that we've got more mountain to climb. <laughs> and uh, and so it's 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 time to get on. And, uh, and I think we are, I think we can, and I think we will summit this thing uh, in time forward. And, uh, and it'll be really, really amazing. And we'll look back on this day, kind of like we looked back on that, that uh, departure date with, ooh, baby, <laughs> here we go. Uh, with, uh, ooh, baby, here we go. Let's go do this, you know? And, and so I'm excited about what the future holds uh, because I've now done this kind of thing that we're doing five times in my career. And, and I'd be a liar if I didn't say it was hard, but I'd also be a liar if I didn't say that, but it will be worth it. I think that's probably the most important thing we've said about a lot of things in life, right? You know, yeah. the, times, the hard times are the most difficult, but then the other, another person in that room that more, that day that we talked about, and I'm kind of keeping it, keep me in order to remember who we got on here was Ken Bailey. And I it happens to be in the bottom right of my screen right now. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go to Ken because he's another person sitting right there at that table with Aaron and I that has, you know, has a different perspective you've become good friends with. So Ken, what you got, what you got for Jeff this morning? Thanks, Chris. And Thanks, Jeff, for being on here. We, we so, so, so much appreciate it, always, but especially with the convergence and everything. But I was just thinking, it's been eight and a half years, a little over eight and a half years, and I just want everybody to know that Jeff and the management team have fulfilled every single promise that they made us back eight and a half years ago and beyond. Jeff, to the point of even paying a speeding ticket for me <laughs> that I got the second time I ever met him, Get this, we're on a road in North Carolina. The only, only, it's like midnight, Jeff, if you remember. The only yep. road. I get this speeding ticket. Just met Jeff, you know, second time. So embarrassed. Got so shook up. I got lost taking him back to the hotel. <laughs> but he was so good with it and, and ended up giving me money for the ticket the next day in front of the crowd. So anyway, they fulfilled every promise and beyond. So that's <laughs> But you actually, you actually already answered. I was going to ask the question, how confident are you that we'll emerge stronger than ever? But you really already answered that. So I'm just going to throw a different one, Jeff. What has surprised you the most during the merger? And, and also something you said about Mark. It sounds like he's maybe taking an even more significant role in the leadership going forward. 
Yeah, his his role is to uh, New Age, as you know, is has aggregated some companies, and uh, and he he has responsibility for the network marketing um, elements of of this business mm-hmm. of this greater company, and um, and a, a number of of departments and and disciplines within the organization are are emerging under his leadership as well and. Um, not the least of which is IT, which is important because of the challenges that we've had. And, and what I love about that idea is that um, Mark understands your world better than anybody and arguably better than some of you. <laughs> he's, he's so good at bringing people up to the standard that this leadership on this call has achieved because he is he is so seasoned and and experienced in in the dynamics and the realm of of leading network marketing organizations like the ones that you guys have and um and so uh in that role it's it's so important to have that perspective when you're leading functions like IT and marketing and other roles in the organization so that they align with what you need, with what you seek. And and that's an important thing. Um, What was the other element of your question? Um, Oh, what what did I see as most challenging? Um, uh, You know, I've been watching network marketing merges for Oh, more than 15, almost, almost, well, more than 20 years. Um, when I was at Price Waterhouse as a, as a, a, an, a excuse me, an auditor, um, I audited all the public companies in the office. I audited all the large companies and I audited all the network marketing companies. <laughs> so I got insight into those organizations and operations, their dilemmas and challenges and their victories uh, from a, an entirely different perspective. And having watched them for years while I was um, at uh, USANA and then again at, at Oryx, um, I noted how challenging it is to merge companies. Many network marketing market merges have failed. Many of them have. Um, it's incredibly difficult. And as I studied, and learned what the factors were that caused those challenges, I could narrow it down to two main things. Um, One, but not as important, was the compensation plan. People had a very difficult time in other network marketing merges accepting a new compensation plan. they they liked what they had. That's why they were there. And and so in merging, it became very, very challenging. It is for us, but less so because all the best elements of the compensation plans are prevailing. We knew that before we started. So we we were very sensitive and conscious about that. The second but most important element of challenge is merging cultures. Um, We believed at the outset that it would be easier than it has been. That said, it has been remarkably better, almost infinitely better (laughs) than other network marketing companies I've seen. And, And in that regard, I'm super grateful that we've been able to accomplish it as well as we have. It has been a challenge. And, and so, and that's not to say that people in either organization don't like each other. They just function differently, right? And so it's, um, it, it has been a challenge. And having said that, I, uh, I think Brent has done a nice job of getting people together, involving people in their different perspectives. I think that the management has, has done a nice job of 
of looking past our differences and, and creating a greater organization out of the two. And uh, Jeff, I believe going forward, it'll even be better. Yeah. Um, you, you referred to us several times, but, but you're actually looking at a blended family here on the screen. And I, I think maybe the most appropriate way to, to kind of get the last 15 minutes in is we've got Tracy that came from New Age. We've got Deb that came from New Serity. We've got Amy that came from Pure. We've got Stefan that, that really came from USANA. Uh, yep. and, um, so uh, if, 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 if we could just, and I know James, I see you, I know you guys are out there. Sorry, y'all didn't all get put up here. Um, but uh, it, what would just start maybe with Amy and just go around that horn and let each one of them maybe share what they felt coming in to the culture and then uh, ask you a question. Yep. Hey, Jeff, you know you're hey, my sister, right? <laughs> the legend. Uh, there she is. Hey guys, Amy's in the house. <laughs> That's awesome. um, Jeff, number one, just thank you for being here this morning. I don't know about anybody else, on the other 100 and close to 70 people on here, but isn't it just, um, I mean, I just feel better. Just hearing his voice, just, oh, I'm, God, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, there he is. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all you do. I don't know if I have a question for you, Jeff, but I do want to share something Yeah. Um, that relates kind of to, it does relate to you and I. Um, I you know, when I came from Pure, um, you know, it was a very, uh, it was a struggle to make that decision to leave. I hung my hat there. I'm not a network jumper. jumper. I don't get my hand, I don't have my hands on a whole bunch of different companies. And, um, and I tried to stay, um, at that, you know, I was, I tried to stay and yes, it, you did. <laughs> uh, and I cried and I cried. I did not even want to meet you, Jeff. I did not. I was like, I don't even want to be on this zoom with you. And, uh, in a good way though, in a good way. And for those of you guys that are on here, that's what I want you to know. Like, um, it was such a struggle. I, I interviewed this company for six months. Jeff mm -hmm. and Mark and Deanna and back to Fred and back to Jeff and and it was tough and Jeff I'll never forget I mean all all the owners made an impact on me but you made a significant impact on me it was the story um it was the story of walking away um mm -hmm. and because that's what I was walking away from knowing that mm -hmm. I, I wasn't looking at having anybody follow um and I had all these other companies offering me like side deals. And mm -hmm. you said, we're not going to offer you a deal. And that made the biggest impact on me that I, it wasn't that you were trying to buy me. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> then the other one that you made to me was, but I promise you, we will do it different here. Because it wasn't just a place about bringing Amy Summers to, like what's good for Amy Summers. What was most important was like, what's good for our team. We were getting ready to bring over so many people and I, and there were so many feelings of uneasiness. And <coughs> what I knew that day, Jeff, is that I could trust you. And I needed that in my life more than anything. Um, you can't build any type of business without trust, um, a relationship. Um, a I know we're in the field, but we have to have that partnership with corporate. And that day with you, Jeff, and you were sitting there lis listening to me ball like a baby and just like, I mean, I can feel you just- You made me up. cry. <laughs> so I guess what I want to say in the statement that I want you all to know, everybody on here, is you may feel like we're in uneasy waters, like we're going like this and we're going like this. Mm -hmm. But this leadership from Jeff to Mark to Deanna to Fred to Brent, they're going to hold us. They're going to hold us. I, I would not be here if I didn't think we were going to be, we're, we're always, we're, we should be going through stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And so Jeff, I just want to thank you for, I'm, I'm here and I'm like, we're all right. The ship isn't sinking, you guys. We've got the most amazing leadership and they're going to hold us through this. And at the and they will make sure that the best is, is to come for us. So Jeff, thank you 
for sharing your story. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for being our friend. And thank you. I mean, I, I truly know that Jeff Yates and this company has our back. So thank you for all of that. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. That's, That's why we do it. this right there. People, people who lean on trust have a tendency to find each other. <laughs> so thank Absolutely. you. Hey, Deb, I think you have a different perspective because your company was a little different than we'll go to Tracy because obviously, you know, you got, you know, you didn't really know what was happening all at once. I'll be actually, I heard the story that you found out what was happening kind of without a whole lot of notice that you guys were going to become, you know, from you, Sarity, we're going to become a part of RX. So. Yeah, it's trust. Hey, right, Chris and Jeff, we built. Yeah, our... Hey, Jeff, um, I'm like Amy. I'm your biggest fan. You know, we need to hear you more. We need this I more. Love that. Jeff, your trust. <laughs> no, we need to go traveling somewhere. Okay, That's what okay. we need to do. And look at that little octopus in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, I'll never forget I those know, days. Exactly. It's trust. We build our whole network marketing business around trust and relationships and it's that trust and relationship that you have built with us as well as Mark and Fred and and Brent and everybody and you know so the little bit of the story and I can't go into detail because I'll get in trouble but Nucerity was dating another business before Rx came along and that company was a bunch of crooks I'll tell you they're a bunch of crooks and it was just horrific and we just went into a downwards spiral and then we started to date rx and when we started to date rx and all of a sudden we get a um, a zoom we're coming into rx you know our merge did not go well right yeah, like Jeff, it wasn't pretty right there was like manually putting in checks we're just trying to save the the ground and it wasn't pretty and a lot of you don't know that because we didn't tell you we were right. crying for days, right, Jeff? And, and um, yeah, I got offered, here's half a million, come into this company, bring, bring your tribe. I'm, I'm not doing it because of Jeff and the leaders. You know, 25 years in the corporate world, you learn her, who to trust and who not to. You know yeah. who's going to win and who's going to lose. And so what, what Amy said was absolutely it. It was that trust and it still is. And so there's days where we're thinking, Oh boy, here we go again, right? On a bigger scale, but we just wipe it away and go, no, no. To go to the top, we gotta go back 20 steps to go ahead a thousand. Otherwise we're just gonna stay stagnant. And so, yeah, it's so comfortable. Oh, we could have just stayed there. No, to get better, we have to do this. So Jeff, you being on here this morning, we need to hear your voice more and your giggle. Mm, thanks. That giggle just, sends me and my heart just patters, but I'm getting messages like crazy about this morning. So, you know what? I don't have any questions because I know, I know, like I know we've got this. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Deb. We love you guys. And you know, all these people have different perspectives. We were coming because, you know, we lost our company. Amy, you know, Amy came because she was somewhere she was happy. Deb came because that's, you know, it was just, and Tracy was here, and next thing he knows, he gets merged over with these guys he don't know have a clue who he is with. So Tracy, why don't you give us your perspective? I think it's a, it's a, that was what the purpose this morning was. We all know Jeff is calming, but I want, you know, Tracy got introduced after kind of not really getting a choice. It's like, here I am. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, we, we uh, <clears throat> thanks, Chris. Um, you know, first of all, this call has been fantastic. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, I, this last week, I celebrated 19 years in Marinda. Boom. And that, 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 that is not a common thing in this industry to be in one. No, that is that so long. awesome. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So great. And, you know, so, so, you know, we were, we were shell shocked. I mean, we, you know, we're a big dog in the block and, you know, all this stuff, yep. but we knew that Brent Willis had this vision of global domination, you know, is, is a way to say it. And so when, when it happened, um, you know, we were excited. We were concerned. We didn't know um, everything you love about Noni plus more um, kind of a, a tagline. And I remember we, we flew we flew out the, the Partners Council and Noni Partners Council flew out to meet some of these uh, some of these guys. And the first time I met Jeff, we were up at Mark's place. And uh, I didn't even know who Jeff was. Never heard of the. You know, I, I guess I saw a picture on the on the website, but I didn't know him from Adam. 
And um, so we were sitting there chatting. I had no idea that he was the, the CFO of RX and USANA and who he was because he was just a servant leader. And he was just this just normal dude. And that's the one thing that, I, that I've really appreciated about the, the corporate feel, the corporate culture is, is these guys are just normal, normal guys. You know, they like to blow stuff up. They like to drive cars. I mean, they, you know, there's normal guys. And in, I don't know if you even re recall this, Jeff, but we went out, we, we went out to, to Mark's place and we were shooting some guns. Yeah. And I got there a little late because I was inside talking to somebody. And, uh, and, and I get there and, and we're shooting and people are missing everything. And, and I hear Jeff whisper to somebody, well, with this gun, you gotta, you gotta aim like an inch higher at this distance or an inch lower or whatever it was. Yeah. And at that moment, Jeff, you became my guy. <laughs> you, you became my guy and I didn't know you. And I'm like, okay, with this one, because you had this experience that, that I didn't have. Now I, I grew up shooting guns. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. We went hunting as kids. You know, we went out and just shot to shoot stuff and did stupid stuff. And so I could shoot and I could have easily gone up there and just point and click. And I wouldn't have been as successful as I could have been yeah. without, without gaining your knowledge. In, in, in every, every weapon that I fired that day, I don't know if you realize it, but you were my guy. I'd say, okay, any tricks with this one? You know, yeah, you know, I remember that like really they, well. Yeah, they they all shoot different. They they, yeah. they were all you know they all react different, and so I was successful because I I had that extra information, that extra experience that I had to lean on because you know I could have gone out there and figured it out on my own and and missed five times oh, before I hit my target. Don't anybody believe him? This guy's a ringer. <laughs> he was dead on. I'm a ringer because I was coached by a guy that knew what was going on, right? And, and so my, my question, and I don't want to take up too much time, but, you know, from, from the corporate perspective, what, what kind of field culture would you ideally want to see? Like if you wave that magic wand. Yep. And then secondly, how, how do you think that that, that that ultimate field culture would help us in our businesses? Um, I think the same thing that God told us when he sent us here. <laughs> and that is, um, you know, uh, you're gonna run into some walls. Uh, you're gonna run into challenges. Um, uh, building a business is work. Uh, overcoming merge challenges, but even without merge challenges, um, building a network, building a team, uh, becoming a leader, learning how to speak in front of people, knowing who to call when, knowing who to advise when, knowing who to bring in other awesome, extraordinary people into the, into the mix when all of those things are hard. But I'm telling you, um, easy was never worthwhile in the long run. I'm telling you, nobody hates working more than I do. <laughs> nobody loves sitting on the beach and just doing nothing more than I do. <laughs> but you know what? I, I don't think our, our life is supposed to be a beach. I really don't. I think we were sent here to grow, develop, stretch, learn, become extraordinary. I think that we are doing that. And, and the best reward I have to suggest uh, lies in your future, our future. But the best suggestion I have is that looking back over what you've accomplished the battles that you've overcome, the mountains that you've summited is more rewarding than money. It's more rewarding than, than health, <laughs> both of which are very, very important because they enable freedom. But being able to look back and say, yeah, I did that. I got there because of what I was willing to do. It is so fulfilling 
so rewarding, so gratifying. And if you forget those people who helped you, who guided you, who fought with you, um, who, who sacrificed for you and with you, um, if you forget them, you don't deserve anything that you got because you didn't. <laughs> you didn't. It was them. And, uh, and be one of those to somebody else. That's what I hope we teach, we learn, we understand, and we do. Absolutely. Thank you. So, I mean, this is so amazing. I'm going to do something that I, we, he don't know I'm going to do this to him. Stefan, you've been here from the very beginning with these guys. Stefan! So we got a call on him. He, did, he has no idea I'm doing this to him, so I'm going to put him on the spot. But he's at the bottom of my screen. I keep seeing that smiling face. And Claudia, we're not going to leave her out. But Stefan, I think... It'd be fitting for you to, to, to chime in here a little bit because you were here from the very start. So, oh, yes, yes, we were. It was, uh, it's been a great journey, but um, I feel like we've known each other forever. Um, we have. To, to, the, to the point that most of you think I come from USANA, and I, I don't come from USANA, I come from New Skin in, with Tim. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so, so the thing is, when we met the team the first time, they just treated us like equals. Right? They, just, they just treated us like equals. Uh, we felt that we needed to pay back by results the way they treated us. Right. And, and we just always felt that, boy, you know, these guys are treating us like kings and queens. We need to deserve that. And we don't feel we deserve it yet because we're just at the bottom. We're just starting. And so, so we had to go show up, prove it, because uh, we need to, to earn that. And so, uh, so that's, that's the way I felt about uh, these guys. But I, I'm not going to do the talking. Jeff is, is the, the guest. I just want to ask you one thing, Jeff. Um, yeah. I remember in 2011 when I met you the first time at the office, you were talking, everybody were talking about the, the, the best compensation plan that pays the most. And yeah. I asked you a question at that time. And I said, how are you able to pay the most? And, and maybe you can explain it real quick. But I know just to point to you what you answered back then is you said, well, we pay more for two reasons. One is generosity. Right? We give more. We're more generous. But the second one is because we're... We're known as the dream team in the MLM industry because we manage our resources right. And you talk to me about like SGNA compared to other yeah. companies. So can you can you just explain? Dude, I'm because, proud of you. Because <laughs> it, it made so much sense. Because we everybody says we pay the most, but you had real numbers, and it just made sense. So can you can you explain that? Well, there is a lot of money in network marketing. Um, the, the, the model is arguably one of the best distribution models anywhere in the world. Um, I would even rival Amazon, in my opinion, uh, as efficient as they are at getting stuff to people, but the opportunity makes one guy rich <laughs> in network marketing. Everybody gets to play and, um, but the fundamentals of business management still exist in all of those businesses. And it comes down to, for every dollar of revenue that you earn, how much of it do you need to spend to get it? And some companies spend too much and or can't deliver the expectations, the benefits, the opportunities at that level of spend. They still can't do it because they're wasteful. But if you can be disciplined, and this, by the way, is a suggestion for your independent business. If you can be disciplined enough to recognize what pays off and what doesn't, and you'd be surprised how much more doesn't than what does. 
don't spend it on anything that doesn't have results, doesn't create a benefit. No matter how badly you want it, it's irrelevant. Being disciplined allows you the resources or the income necessary to invest in growing that top line again. And so if you remain disciplined and repeat that philosophy with every decision that you make, your revenue will always be sufficient for the things you need and the things you want. It's a funny little magical formula. So we decided that we didn't need palaces. We didn't need big, extraordinary events that literally cost millions, but still don't deliver a bigger message than what the core message was. We were disciplined and we still achieved the level of revenue that we sought. We just didn't have to spend so much to do it. And therefore we put it into what we believe was most important. We put it into our compensation. We put it into our people. That's what we did. We did it at USANA. The guys on Wall Street used to say, you guys are the most efficient network marketing management team on the planet. Nobody does it as well as you guys. And so we took that to Rx with us and we did it there too. It's why we could afford to pay more. And we actually do. <laughs> we actually do. <laughs> we can prove it. <laughs> So it paid off after the first day I met you. That was one thing we know was the conservatives, just Jeff. But uh, one final thing I was going to mention, and then I'm going to turn it one thing. Ken Bayless, he had one final comment as well. I want to say this, Jeff. Somebody talked about culture. And I think yeah. we didn't intend for this to be on the, the way it worked out. But we've got Noni, Pure, Todd mentioned that, New Serity. We, you know, we came from a different background. I mean, it, it, I, I am totally amazed at how ever, I mean, I'm just, this is, was my call five years ago, and I've had so many guests on, and now Amy's committed to being a guest. We'll, we'll find out a date soon. Stefan's been on here. The culture, if everybody says it's so difficult, and I, I want you to know that I am, we feel like a family. I mean, I really feel that way with Amy. We, when we met in Destin, and I feel that way with Deb. When, when we met the very first time we talked in, in, in Salt, I believe it was Salt Lake City there. It doesn't matter. We have The culture has been such a in my mind, that everybody thinks is so difficult. I don't see it. And maybe that's because the ones that don't fit don't come. The ones that don't make it don't make it here. The ones that come, they don't fit. They we, This this group is, is different, and I mean that sincerely. So, Ken, you, we're going to let you wrap it up. Chris, you were right on, on, on key with what I was going to talk about. <laughs> Something that Amy said, and I want everybody to think about, she said it was so calming to have Jeff and trust in him. Folks, think about this for one second. We've got leadership with, with Jeff Yates, Mark Wilson, Deanna Latson, Ian Chandler, Cameron Bott, Brent Willis. That's going to take care of us. But, but along what Chris was just saying, look at all these teams and the leaders that have come together today. Folks, do you know that we could go out tomorrow and start, a brand, start over from zero and build one of the biggest companies in the industry with the people that are on this call? But we don't have to start over. We can start at four or 500 million with what we've got just on this call. <laughs> yeah, Steve Schwartz and Tim Sells. And, I mean, you think of that. Guys, we've got something powerful here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Todd. Jeff, we're not going to let you wait so long before you come back. I've gotten so many text messages, I can't stop looking at my phone because everybody's like, he just has an effect. My, even my daughter said, I can't wait to meet this guy in person. She's like, he just seems so much fun. And I said, he is that, but he is also – Mr. Conservative, and he's the guy you want taking care of things. So, Jeff, thank you so much. Any, thank I don't you. know what else to say. We ran over on our time, but I don't think anybody here is wanting to leave because Jeff has that way with everybody. But hey, let's Chris, do this time. Let's do I this do have, time. You have one time. I got one recommendation, and that is everybody I'm sitting here looking at has all made millions in the industry. We should do a Saturday morning and bring back the same panel and kind of ask them their starting point. I was just thinking about Stefan. Stefan learned how to speak English listening to Tim Sales network marketing training. I mean, everybody here has yeah. a story. Nobody arrived. I heard Tracy's yesterday for the first time how he got mentored as a college student. So we, we need to book this out in the future where everybody's got a free Saturday and do this. Hey, we're Thank just, you, Jeff. We're going to mark them Thank down. You. I'm going Thanks, to Jeff. All in. Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys, for being on. Jeff, you're amazing. Guys, thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. So good to be with you.